Hello. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Kadram Garami, and uh, I'm a dermatologist and a dermatopathologist both. And uh, many of you I see in clinic. Uh, nice to see familiar faces there. Okay, so um, what my assignment for today was is to talk to you a little bit about the genetics behind melanoma. All right, so um, when we talk about genetics for melanoma, we'll talk about genetics in two ways, okay? One are what we'll call germline mutations, and those are um, changes in your DNA that you inherit from your parents that are present in all the cells of your body and that you'll pass along to your children as well, and they affect the risk that you have for getting melanoma. And those, again, are called the germline changes. And then we have what are called somatic mutations. And those are basically changes in DNA that are just in the tumor only, okay? So two different types of DNA changes that affect melanoma, okay? And the, again, the germline ones are the ones that affect our risk for melanoma. Okay, so when we talk about these germline um, mutations or these DNA changes that increase our risk, um, we can talk about several different um, specific DNA changes, but the most common ones, or the one, it, well, first I'm gonna actually step back a second. We have high-risk genes and low-risk genes, and saying that they're high penetrance is another way to say that it's very high risk. If you get that DNA change, you have a very high risk of getting melanoma. So the first one we'll talk about is this gene called CDKN2A, which this is the most common cause of familial melanoma. And in about five to 10% of cases, melanoma can be considered familial, meaning there's a strong familial link to it. And out of that five to 10%, about 40% of them are linked to some type of change in this gene called CDKN2A. So when we have patients who have strong family histories, and I'll tell you a little later about maybe some of the criteria we use, but when they have like really strong family history or they've had multiple melanomas at a young age, this is one of the things that we might test them for to see if they have a change in this particular gene that may be the reason that they're so predisposed to all these melanomas. Okay. And what does this gene do? It's kind of a fancy diagram. We don't have to pay attention. All you need to know is that this gene makes some proteins, two different ones, one called P16 and another P14, that basically stop cells from growing too much when they're stimulated to grow. And that's basically what that gene's supposed to do. And if it's not working right, when cells start to grow, when the sun stimulates moles to start growing, you won't have the machinery intact to stop them. All right, now um, when do we check for that gene? So the, the cases where we think that there's a high likelihood that somebody might have a mutation in that gene that we could test for is we kind of use this rule of three, which is basically if someone has three personal melanomas before the age of about 30 or 35, or they have one melanoma and two first degree family members with melanoma, or two melanomas and one first degree family member. So that's kind of a simple rule of three that we use, that if somebody meets those criteria, we would think, okay, that seems like a high risk enough situation where we would check them to have that gene. If they don't meet that criteria, then we generally find the chances or the odds of them having that specific change in their DNA is kind of low. All right, now this is a kind of a, a, a statement here that it can kind of address some of the questions we were uh, talking about earlier. So one of the things that we talked about a little bit earlier was, well, how much does the sun impact? Well, the sun is a major driving force, UV. Uh, UV is a major driving force in, in fact, it's the only modifiable risk factor that we know of. And um, just to give you an idea, because it's, it's hard to study this, um, but they've taken patients who they know have that high-risk gene, and they live in Australia, where we know the UV index is a little bit higher, and similar individuals who have the same genetic change that live in the United States. And they compared what percent get melanoma. 
They have the same genetic background. So it's a nice way to compare. And what they found is that 76% of patients who have that high-risk melanoma gene in the United States ended up with melanoma, whereas in Australia, where they have a higher UV index, just by living somewhere with a higher UV index, but having the, the same genetic alteration, 91% got melanoma. Just to give you an idea that uh, what a strong factor UV plays, so it's really a matter of the genes that you have, how high they predispose you, what type of risk factor genes you have, and then the UV on top of that alters that. Okay, there are some other genes, another one that we can test for called CDK4, which really drives melanoma cells to grow. So if you have an alteration in that gene, almost 100% of the time you get melanoma, but it's only responsible for about 2% of familial melanoma cases. And then we have XP genes or xeroderma genes. These are genes related to your ability to correct DNA damage. So whenever we get DNA damage, actually our DNA is being damaged all the time by the sun, but we have proteins that are designed to repair that. So every time we get sun damage, we get, the DNA gets altered, but our body fixes it right up. But there are some people that have what we call xeroderma pigmentosa, and they don't have the proper genes to repair sun damage. And that is another um, kind of uh, idea. Many of these patients get melanoma at very young ages, like 10, 12 years old, just to tell you how important um, sun, uh, sun is and, and protecting and um, correcting sun damage is. All right, another gene that I can tell you about real quickly is the BAP1 gene. We have some patients who have a, a mutation in this gene that leads to familial melanoma. It's most riskiest for melanoma of the eye, and it also can lead to other cancers. So that's an important thing too. Some of these genes that lead to increased risk for melanoma, they can actually lead to increased risk for some other types of cancers. So if we identify that type of gene in your system, then we can check you for the other types of cancers. And uh, we could, that could end up, in many cases, saving your life by making sure you don't get one of these alternative types of cancers that are also linked to this gene. All right. And then there are some other genes that are linked to your skin pigmentation. And these are what we call low penetrant um, ger um, germline mutations or genes that affect your risk for melanoma, but they only infer a little bit or a low level of increased risk. And they basically are genes related to your skin pigmentation, whether you tend to burn or freckle when you, or tan when you're exposed to the sun. And people who tend to burn more and tan less have a higher chance of getting melanoma, whereas if you tend to tan better and you don't tend to burn as much, that have a little bit lower risk. We don't tend to test for these genes because we can just ask you some simple questions that will give us some similar information. All right, and uh, this just shows you this pathway. One thing I do want to mention that really you don't have to understand this diagram, but one thing I do want to mention is when you're exposed to the sun, there is this hormone, it's called POMC, pro-opiomelanocortin, which is released from your brain. Part of that protein comes down and affects this protein called MC1R, and that decides how you're going to respond. Are you going to tan? Are you going to burn, etc.? But another part of that POMC actually affects the opiate pathway and actually can make people physically addicted to sun experience. So Many people who have a hard time staying away from sun, there is an actual physical or biologic reason for that. You can actually have addiction to sun exposure. Um, and um, this uh, MC1R gene, this is again, one of the low risk sun exposure genes, or one, sorry, one of the low risk genes that lead to melanoma. And these are some other ones, we can skip through that.
And now I'll briefly just talk about what we call the somatic mutations. These are the changes that occur only in your melanoma tumor, not in your whole body, that lead to that tumor growth, okay? And we have different types of melanoma, and that's important to know. When we, this is the reason why it is so hard to address the question of what the role of sun is in melanoma, because the answer, that's a hard question to answer, because we have very specific different types of melanoma. And we know that there are some types of melanoma that are completely driven by sun, and there's other types that are not. And um, I like to imagine it this way. We have melanomas that are the result of chronic sun damage, melanomas of intermittent sun damage. I think um, Dr. Choi explained this very well. And then there's other types of melanomas that are unrelated to sun exposure. Another way I like to think of this is the melanomas that Pamela Anderson would likely get from chronic sun exposure on um, Baywatch, the melanoma that Kim Kardashian might get from an intense sunburn, or the melanomas that Nicki Minaj might get because she has darker, more protected skin. And we see very specific mutations that go along with these different types of melanomas. So we have BRAF melanomas, RAS melanomas, NF melanomas, and melanomas that don't have any of these type of mutations. But what I want you to see here is these three major types of melanomas 90% have UV signatures. That means that they can look at the DNA of those types of melanoma and they can see that these DNA, there are DNA changes that have a footprint of sun on there because there are specific DNA changes that occur when you're exposed to the sun. So I, I think I just want to end there to say that there are these dif specific different types of melanomas that have different types of genes that are related to how much sun you get. And uh, they look different. This is the type of melanoma you get on an area that's just chronically been exposed to sun. This is an acral melanoma. These don't have any relation to sun. And then this is a melanoma you might see on the trunk, and these are the types that are most related to that, those brief intermittent bouts of sun exposure. And uh, in ending, we have these different types of melanomas. They have different things inside of them, but they are not all the same uh, on the inside, even though they might look similar on the outside. Uh, thank you, and that's it.